Gav here from DancePlanet.tv. We've travelled up to Bradford. I finally met Devin Peterson. We went out last night and had a blast. Thanks for meeting me again Cheers, today. Tom. Thanks a lot. Tell us a little bit about, here we are in Bradford with Sunbridge Wells. Tell us a little bit about the building. It's really yeah, worthy. So Sunbridge Wells is it's a new building. It's probably open probably, I think it's a year now. And I've, I've just moved into one of the, the flats. And it's, it's amazing. I mean, you've got quirky bits, as you'll, you'll see later on in the video. And yeah, as we take you through, you'll, you'll probably be surprised. Yeah, and I see there's lots of bars in there. So see well, it's my kind of place, isn't it? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what Dark's trying to in South Africa at the moment. So, at this very point in time, obviously, it's a WDF. Um, so, the, the, the organization or the mother body is called Dark South Africa. Um, okay. So, myself, I've been working along with them and just getting the, the sport developed because it kind of got to a point where you could only get your South African colors and then do a World Cup here and there, uh, maybe second year and then uh, African event. Um, so, it's like one event per year, maybe. And if you want to, like you say, really make it, is it a case of if you are at the top there, you do need to obviously locate over here eventually to play in pretty much all the tournaments, the players, you know, championships? Ultimately, yeah, I think if you if you, if you you think that you're worth your salt as a dark player and, and, and fancy your chances, then and obviously the, the, the best place to be is in the UK with yeah. the BBC obviously dominating um, the world of darts at the minute. Um, Barry Hearn doing a fantastic yeah, job. Yeah, it's, it's a huge now, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's massive. I mean, a lot of players are making a living from it and it doesn't mean that you just have to win. I mean, if you're playing on tour as well, I mean, winning a few, or not even winning, still winning a few games, you yeah. a few grand on, on, exactly. on tour. So it's 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 massive what the PDC has offered uh, players. Um, and you got like, you got players from Brazil, which is Diego. Yeah. You got Kyle Anderson, Simon Woodlock coming from Australia. Australia. You got South America. coming through. Exactly, you got South American players. You got American players. You got all of this, this entire, the entire globe is literally coming to England to play darts, so it's, it's fantastic. It's not going to stop there, the show is just getting bigger and bigger and yeah, bigger, I isn't think it? In more, more countries and... In, in hopefully in two to three years time, we need to host a World Series event in South Africa, but that would obviously be determined by how we obviously develop it and, and make it a spectacular sport in South Africa. Why are you on about South Africa? Can you tell us a little bit about the um, tournament that you're involved in with The Last Man Standing? Yeah, so Last Man Standing has, um, it was initiated in 2017. Um, we hosted one major and qualified, which was Dion Oliver. He then came through to play in the World Cup. We lost in the World Cup. Wow. Uh, I think it was the last 16 against yeah. the Netherlands, which obviously won it. And then we hosted the exact same major. But before we hosted the major, we had 16 tour events that happened in South Africa. So we emulated exactly what the PDC has um, on the site. Not with the same kind of prize money, but we are injecting some good prize money. That Into we it's generated a yeah. lot of interest. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. So now we've moved on to our second year. We hosted another another major, which got the qualifier, which was Liam O'Brien. We lost in the last 16 and came <laughs> against Michael Van Gogh and Ibrahim from Barnabel, which then obviously... Well, you know... Yeah, we, we tend to kind of... That's a bad draw anyway, All it? the time, yeah. So 
they, <laughs> they won again. Um, so yeah, so now next year with, with all the developments, so we've got uh, um, Alexander Fadel, he's one of the youth players, I think he just turned 19, he'll be playing in the Youth World Championship this year and yeah. we'll have a qualifier next year. In 2019 we'll have a qualifier for the women's, we'll probably have a qualifier for the World oh, Championship. So it's well. really moving in the yeah, world. Yeah, we're, we're looking there. to host four majors, um, four majors in the different categories, so there'll be two men, one lady, one youth as well. Yeah. And then also all the, with the tour being in six or seven different areas in South Africa, because yeah. South Africa is massive. Um, we're looking at, we, we host about, between about, it's probably about 360 to 450 players on, on, on a given time within, within a, in the tour that's, itself. That's so impressive though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's going to grow. I mean, and is there a lot of sponsorship interested in it at the moment? Not at all though. I mean, darts is, 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 is a minority sport, if you call it that. Um, yeah. Because we've got the massive three, which is rugby, uh, yeah. football and cricket. Yeah. So darts is obviously seen as a pub game, as it is, yeah. yeah. We, don't, we don't have the Barry Hearn, obviously, to push no. it in South Africa. So I've taken it upon myself to kind of plug in some money um, and I actually grow the sport on, on the back of me. Because I think it's more about legacy than currency. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. Yeah. hopefully yeah. We'll, we'll get a few more players this year coming through to the Q School, um, playing in the Q School. That would be brilliant, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think having more South Africans present on there because everybody says, yeah, you're the only South African on tour, and I, I'm like the, probably the one that, that took uh, the, the the jump or the leap, yeah. obviously, and and, and and made it a gave it a good go at yeah. this point in time. Yeah. So yeah, so I think there's a lot of there's a lot of top quality players. Wally Sheffer, he, he was on tour as well. Um, he never had his tour card, but he was he was one of those players that were always on the tour as well. But he's 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 done amazing stuff. He went back to South Africa. But I'm, I'm sure he'll be back in Kim's school. Liam O'Brien, as everybody's seen at the World Cup, he's played fantastic. Yeah. Um, we have a few more players, the Graham Fulbies that has played before. Um, Charlie Lost, I'm, I'm thinking he probably wants to have a go. Um, yeah, you have Nolan Arden as well. He's, he's played a few games on tour, um, but mostly Challenge Tour. Um, so yeah, so this is fantastic. I think all countries need somebody like, like um, Max Hoff of like Germany's been really? big. Diego Portella for Brazil, as you say, is doing it. Um, you've got John Parr and Jeff Smith obviously doing quite well yeah. now moving and over. And Dawson Shell also from Canada. Exactly, well. he's now, and I think he's is he moved, I think he's probably moved over. Is he yeah. always going to? I we'll see somewhere. It, it's. I think he. he I can't remember if he, if he said he was going to move over, but that was the plan. But yeah. I think if you if you're going to make it, give it a good go. Like I've travelled all the time back and back forth, and, and forth. I've now kind of rooted myself in the UK to offer yeah. to give it a, a proper go. So yeah, hopefully the the future is is bright. bright. Fantastic. Yeah. So what, in regards to practice and that, you're a big practicer of the game. I do. Yeah, because I, I, I changed my throw uh, probably 14 or 15 months ago. It's it's kind of taken me a few steps backwards. Um, in my game itself, so getting back to the confident level that I was, performing at the levels that I could. Yeah. Um, I've kind of taken a, it's kind of taken a, a different route this time. But so I've, I've I've pushed in a lot of practice over the years now, and it's probably now I probably practice about four to five hours per day. And you're feeling really good. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm playing well. Um, what was the reason behind um, changing the throw game? Anything in particular, or you just there was went there, back to the grassroots like some of them don't start again? Was it's it? not. It's, it wasn't. It, so basically, my throw was more of a shoulder kind of throw, and it was advised by um, Rod Harrington and Wayne Marlow. They said that I should look at it because it's obviously not going to. Once once the game starts getting pressured, the, the shoulder comes in, so you're not as consistent. If you're looking at the boys like Gary Anderson, Michael Van Gogh, and Michael Smith, all these boys averaging 104, 105. Yeah, five. serious. If you're, not, if you're not, if you're not, because nobody's just here to compete. We want to win. Yeah. So I, I knew that if I'm going to change my throw, I, I could hopefully get to those those levels and, yeah. and then I'm obviously in with a shout but if you're not really if you're not if you're averaging like 99 these days you, you're not going to you're not going to no you need to be it's some, you see some crazy averages I think it was that last year when Barney lost to 107 average or, or something yeah, I think crazy. It, was a, it was a was a 111 he lost 111 yeah. was it he lost to Joe Cullen 6-2 in, in a European event oh that's right yeah, Andrew, yeah, yeah. Andrew Gilden lost to 107 average to MVG or something didn't he but that's, it's that, just crazy yeah and, and the game itself is developed I mean Michael Van Gogh and Rob Cross Gary Anderson Michael Smith and all these other boys that play Premier League as well they kind of push the game to the next level yeah. where 105 kind of is where you have to be and Peter Wright as well I've missed him but he's yeah. one of the top performers yeah so yeah so they they kind of push the game to the next level and we kind of the boys that obviously just put it it's like exactly what full did when he the first hundred average yeah and it became like the benchmark so now 105 106 exactly is where you got the, so. does it bother a lot of players when you talk about averages and do a lot of players worry about um 
averages or do a lot of players like James Wade's one that um, I always think yeah. don't necessarily average high um, but win the right legs at the right time do every player when they're practicing always worry about exactly what they've got because on Sky everything's about averages about how they performed or who's going to win in the next match so and so's hit this average so and so what about you? I, think, you they've, about I think they've developed the sport into for a lot more of the for the stats, so that you've got yeah. a lot of people that, that are fan of the stats, like the forums and so on, yeah. wanting to know exactly how much he averaged and so on and so forth. But for me personally, I'm just more of a win guy, so yeah. if I need to throw 100 average in this game, and that's going to get me the win, that's what I'm going to yeah. do. If I need to throw 110, that's what you need to do. So if it's an 89 that gets you the win, in the end, the double Exactly. Counts, if yeah. you've got an 86 average and win, you'd be much prefer that than that. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, so, it's, so it's all about that, isn't look, it? Look, I think, I think in the end, I mean, um, different players, you do you kind of focus because you measure your, your ability on the yeah. average basically, but you know it's not it's not kind of cast in, in stone basically that you are an 86 player. Yes. You, anybody on the tour can average 100, um, but it's, it's the consistent players See, that, the that donor, always, yeah, week in, week that out, push, isn't it? That push the 100 averages all the time, and those are the ones that are either at the latter stage of the tournaments or winning. Joe yeah. Cullen himself, he's been, he's been averaging like just under 100 and just touching over 100 at yeah. times and that's why he's seen himself skyrocket up to the... He was unlucky in the match play as well, weren't yeah, he? Yeah, it was, it, was it was missed chances, I think. He played well against Gezi, he played well against Dal Gurney and then up against Gary Anderson, you kind of knew that it was up against the game yeah. but, but his, his performances on, against Gary on the stage, he, I think he's been, he was 2-0 up. Um, he's local to Bradford as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a good friend of mine as well, yeah. and probably like a brother to me. So, And he's, he's been through, in my career, he's, he's been a, a, a pillar of support. So, yeah, he's, I think that he's got a lot more to show and a lot more to give. And his, his character as well uh, for the sport is, is what we, it's not that what we lack, but <laughs> he's, he's, he would be a, a breath of fresh air, we must call it that. Yeah. So, thank you for that, but while, while we're on practicing, um, one of the subscribers asked me to ask you, is there any practice routines that you do that really help your game, or that you should be concentrating yeah. on, or new ideas really, because a lot of people say, it, it can become boring, can't it? Yeah, it does though, but for me, personally, I, I've, I've been practicing technique most of the time, so scoring and accuracy is a, is a massive thing, so technique was just putting in the hours on the trebles and the doubles. But what I used to do was I used to go around the board at least three or four times before I start playing. Yeah. Um, then I'll hit um, the three major trebles, which is treble, for, um, treble 20, treble 19, treble 18. I did that about 50 times in the game. I've been um, there all day, just going <laughs> Yeah, and, and then I'll do some um, finishes as well, so that combines the trebles with the doubles. Yeah. And then on the end, I'll just end off with two, with a kind of like a race kind of against the time, just to make sure that I'm hitting it as quick as I possibly can. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah, so that used to be um, a kind of, a, it'd take me about an hour and a bit to get through most of that thing. Yeah. And um, yeah, and then just throwing kind of five ones against myself, three ones against myself, because in the game you also then obviously manage where you have to get it through. It's um, it's two, it's two, basically parts of the game. So you got three or one where the game really breaks down. So people, you, you normally break down from five or one. So you yeah. start off with it. It's ninety seven leaves you four or four, one eighteen leaves you two hundred and twenty four. So yeah. you're sitting on a double with yeah. twelve. So basically, when you when you in three or one, so it's literally a start of a match with a slow start, tan tan, and then three on is where you break down. So you kind of work down your break And checkouts in the hundreds and that are more important now. But years ago, you could get away with it. You need yeah. to be able to be checking out the, the yeah ones anything ones between and all them different anything ones between a hundred and a hundred and thirty is a is a possible out shot. Yeah. Um, Obviously, but I mean, as in taking out basically with the, with the players on tour. So if you missing, if you let's say for example, I had 48 left and you had 130 left. Yeah. If I miss that, I would almost imagine that you're going to finish. Yeah. It, you know what I mean? Yeah, so it. it's not giving players. If you watch MVG, MVG is cl clinical in that 98 to 130 yeah, yeah. area. So that's that's where he kills a lot of players as well. It does. So, yeah. So, what about plans for, two, for the rest of 2018? Obviously, we've got the Ali Pali coming up, yeah. um, which is the main, your main goal, I would imagine. Yeah, it is. Um, I, I definitely want to want to progress up the rankings, and, and this is obviously getting into the majors. We've got two um, European qualifiers. We've got three left for the year. Um, then you've got the Players' Championship, you've got the Grand, Grand Slam qualifiers, you've got the World Series qualifiers, and then you've obviously got the World Champs. Yeah. So the back end of the year is quite crammed with a lot of majors and, yeah. and just kind of ending off the tour. So. For me, I'd, I'd, I'd really like to make um, three of those majors, which are the back end, which is the Europeans. I've yeah. not qualified for the European as yet for this year, it's been quite tough. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I know that for the next the next three events, I, I'm I'm gonna give it a good go, and and hopefully I can qualify for that. And a few wins on the tour, on the European tour, gets you into the into the final. So Finals, yeah. yeah, you never know. I mean, it can it can turn over just like that in the next five or one. So fingers crossed for those three, and then turning up for the qualifiers as well. And you might see me in all five. I'm just saying this crap. Good, good chance yeah. to do it, well, especially like you say, you're playing well at the moment. And if you do get to these, how are you going to top this dance? We've had the hoverboard, we've had all these <laughs> just, just crazy dancers that you obviously, or everybody love and relate to. Could it be topped? It's going to be a hard thing. I'm, I've been practicing my back though, so. Have I'm, you? No. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me after meeting you. I can quite imagine you have been. Yeah. Doing something sort of with that bit of I think I think every time adding something to the dance that yeah. I do in the beginning that started off as a joke and now yeah. has become a, a kind of a, a, a trademark. Yeah, yeah. Well, so people look for it, don't they? Of course, yeah. So yeah, I, I think probably adding adding a black a backflip or something like that, or ripping my shirt off, showing my six, six pack in the end <laughs> and at the Ale Alexander Palace. Yeah, you, you never know. Just just keep your eyes up and keep your your cameras rolling because you never know what might happen. Fantastic. Well, listen. Thank you so much. Good luck for the rest of 2018. Great to meet you. Thank you. All the best. Cheers, Devin. Cheers, my man. Thanks, guys, for watching DartsPlanet.tv. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to turn your notifications on, and we'll catch you in the next video. Take it easy. Brilliant. Bye. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs>